Come on, all over this building, let's, let's tell the Lord thank you. You're glad the Lord woke you up this morning. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Everybody standing on your feet all over the building. We come to glorify the name of the Lord. We come to lift up Jesus. You're glad to be here. Tell the Lord thank you. Amen. If the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way, tell the Lord thank you. You got use and activity of your limb. Tell the Lord thank you. Come on, everybody all over the building, let's just tell God thank you. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you. You, you, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh yeah, come on, come on, help him praise him, help him praise him. God bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, amen. Come on, there's nothing wrong with praising the Lord. Tell the Lord, thank you. He should have stayed right up in here and praised the Lord. We come for no other purpose than but to lift the name of Jesus. I do honor my Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ for my here being, thanking God for this blessed privilege, for all that the Lord has done, all that the Lord is doing. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. He's worthy, amen, of all the praise said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Again, I do honor my Lord and Savior to you, the people of God. Amen. To the very fine ushers who have served us. You have the liberty to take your seat. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for our ushers. Amen. 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 To, to, to these very fine musicians, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for our musicians. And for the male chorus, amen, singing to the glory of God, amen, amen. Now, they, they, they sang better than you all responded, amen. Anytime you can get men, amen, to persevere in the house of the Lord, it is a blessing, amen. Truly, God is great, greatly to be praised, amen, to you, the people of God, amen, to all of our deaconess, all of our ministers, amen, to the present, Reverend uh, Ernestine Peel, thank you, amen, for sharing with us and blessing us. We're going to go to the word of the Lord, amen. We come to encourage you in the word of the Lord. God is great, greatly to be praised, amen, and we honor him on this morning. Word of the Lord come to us out of Old Testament scripture, amen, uh, from the book of Genesis, praise the Lord. If you have your me social media device, amen, it may be on the screen, amen. We want, I beg people all over the world, wherever I go, amen, throughout the states, amen, to read the word of God for yourself. For we are living in the last of the last days, amen, and the Bible decree and declare that deception is in the land, and brothers and sisters, whether you realize it or not, amen, uh, trouble is everywhere. You don't have to look for it, it'll come looking for you. You can be at the gas station minding your business, then somebody else want to help you mind your business, but we got to honor the Lord, and there is nothing, amen, indifferent that is transpiring, for the Bible says that. In the last days, men and women shall become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Amen. And God is not going to give his glory to another. And so we come to lift the name of Jesus. Let us go to the word of the Lord. Let us stand. Amen. Those of you that are physically able. And I beg you, if you can stand now, stand while you're able because you get a little bit older. Amen. As you get a little bit older, your bones will start talking to you. You, you, you. you will lay down one way and wake up another way. Amen. The same leg you shook when you were getting in bed, you just be glad to move it when you can get out of bed. Amen. But we are grateful to the Lord. Word of the Lord come to us out of Old Testament scripture, the book of Genesis, chapter number 28. I'm going to read the multi-text, amen, beginning with verse number 10, amen, and ask you to bear with us, amen, as the word of the Lord come forth, beginning with verse number 10, and it reads thusly, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Somebody say all night. All night. Uh -huh. Because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. Somebody say he dreamed. He dreamed. Uh, 
uh, and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said lo I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac the land whereon thy lies to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob waked out of his sleep and he said, watch this, surely, somebody says surely. surely. Uh-huh, he says, and he, and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. And he was afraid and he said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God and this is at the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early the morning in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it upon a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, watch this church, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set for a pillow shall be God's house, and all of that that thou give me, I will surely give thee the tenth unto thee. God bless you. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words, sanctify the truth of it in your hearts. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we shall pray. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you now for this time of sharing the word of the Lord with the people of God. Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your love. Pray now, God, that you will speak through these lips of clay. Allow me to speak with clarity and with biblical accuracy. Send now spiritual, a supernatural spiritual revelation in the word of God. That illumination may come, O oh God, that we may hear a word from the Lord. God, we thank you for your mercy and for your love. I pray now you speak through these lips of clay. But well, we preach Jesus today and him crucified. And on the third day, he was resurrected from the dead. Father, we thank and we praise you. We give you glory. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Let every heart say amen. amen. Uh, my brothers and sisters from this text, for a few moments, somebody say a few moments. A few moments. If you all will help me get up the mountain, I can come down by myself. All right, y'all, 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 y'all gonna help me out. Y'all, y'all just help me, just help me get up the mountain. Uh, they can know if they help me get up the mountain, I can come down. I can come down myself. Amen. I want to talk from a topic. Amen. From uh, the text that we read from a subject. Surely, the Lord is in this place. And I didn't know it. My brothers and sisters, it is here now from this text, amen, that uh, we look at the life of Jacob. And whether you believe it or not, amen, all of our lives are before the Lord. Uh, There there is nothing hid from God. The Bible said that he know our down-sitting and he knows our uprising. But it is uh, ironic and it is phenomenal that the Lord uh, look at Jacob as a person, amen, when you know the history, amen, of his beginning, even how where he was born, amen, he held on as a twin to his brother's heel, amen, because he wanted to be first. Uh, To state my claim and to understand who God really is, the Lord said that Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved. And Uh, Esau was just the one that went about the easy way, sold his birthright, that kind of a thing, amen. But uh, the thing about Jacob was that he had tenacity. And there comes a time in our lives, amen, where in seeking the presence of the Lord, amen, we got to know who God is and where God is. Can I get a witness up in here? 
All right, now I told y'all, if y'all help me get up the mountain, it won't take me long to come down. Amen. And so it is here now from this text that we look at the life of Jacob. Amen. The Lord is trying not only, amen, to teach us about Jacob, he's trying to talk to us about ourselves. Somebody said, the Lord is talking to me. And here now, when we look at the life of Jacob, amen, it is that from the text, amen, because he is afraid, amen, he's trying to get back in good grace with his brother because he has stolen his birthright. And sometimes, amen, we do some wrong things in life. Anybody in here ever done something wrong other than me? You ought, you ought to tell the truth before the presence of the Lord. Our topic is surely the Lord is in now, the book in the Bible was talking about Bethel, amen, but I, I say, surely the Lord is in this place. I can see it because the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I be in the midst. So, brothers and sisters, it is here now that the Lord speaks to us today through Jacob, and he's trying to get us to understand no matter uh, what place we are in, amen, where uh, the journey is trying to take us, amen, we still need God. Say what you want to, doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to need God. There's going to come a time, amen, where you will be like David, where you'll walk through the valley, amen, and then the valley experiences are difficult. Here we must understand, amen, that the Lord is trying to take Jacob from sin to sanctification. What are you saying, preacher, amen? There was sin in Jacob's life, amen. Uh, Jacob was the arch deceiver, amen. He uh, had mastered how to deceive people, amen, and how to do things wrong. When you read the story of his life, the Bible tells us, amen, how even uh, his mother helped him to deceive his father. Somebody said, but God. But God is always in the business, amen, of doing the thing that is right. Brothers and sisters, let us understand that it darkens our spirit, amen, and prevent us as children from fully experiencing the love of God when we contaminate our lives with sin. Oh, you might be getting by. Life might be all right. But somewhere along this journey called life, somewhere along this road, amen, there comes a time, amen, that you're going to need the Lord. There'll be a time where your credit card won't help you. Your mama can't help you. Your daddy can't help you. Money in the bank won't help you. You're going to need the Lord on your side. Here now, amen, the Bible says from John, amen, New Testament, he said that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Amen. Jacob's problem was, amen, he didn't have fellowship with his family and especially his brother Esau because he had deceived him. Amen. Have you ever had a family member to tell you a lie? Yeah, all right, all right, I'm in Williamson, I forgot, amen, Martin, you kind of got all good people in Williamson, amen, and you ain't never had nobody in your family that lied to you, they always told you the truth, but I, I mean, it is what it is, thank God. But here now, as we look at this, amen, we understand, amen, that if we walk in the light as God is in the light, the thing I love about God is that he does not hold my past against me. He's trying to take me where my future is. Amen. If I would just depend and hold on, amen, to God's unchanging hand. Brothers and sisters, it is from this text, amen, when we look at the life of Jacob, it is a transformation process. I don't know if you understand it, amen, but God is trying to help us. He's trying to make us. He's trying to change us. But somebody say it's a process. It is a process, and, and the truth of the matter is God does not have the most viable material to work with simply because we will tell God something on Sunday and do different on Monday. But before Monday get there, we'll do different. But here it is. Amen. Let us understand that I, I said God is trying not only to take Jacob from sin to sanctification, but he's trying to take us from the place we are, from every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, amen, where we can be about the Lord's business. Sanctification, amen, is not a one-time process. I, I just wish I could get more people to come to Sunday school because uh, under the topic of our lesson, it always say, aim for I got some Sunday school students in here. God is trying to change somebody. Amen. If he just changed me a little bit day by day to make me better than what I was yesterday, I can always lift my hand and tell God thank you. Can I get a witness up in here? As we continually to choose to walk in God's light, 
uh, we allow his truth, amen, to expose our sins and his grace to cleanse us. We learn to let go of sinful habits, amen, and cultivate habits that are pleasing the Lord. Two Sundays ago, amen, I, I talked from Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, for, but, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that come to the Lord must believe that he is. How, how many of y'all in here would really like to please the Lord? Don't, 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 don't y'all raise your hand. You're trying to fool me now. But, but I'm just saying, if we really want to please the Lord, we got to be more about God than of ourselves. Sunday school lesson this morning taught us, amen, how we ought to be willing, amen, to humble ourselves and then sacrifice for somebody else. Hear from this text, amen, when we learn what happened in this story with Jacob. The Bible allows us to know, amen, that Jacob was in a certain place, amen, and he lay down to sleep. And you can say what you want to, amen. If you ever worked a full day, you got home and you was tired, you got a little bite to eat, one of the best things you can have, amen. I don't know about you, but I've sat down, amen, in my recliner, amen, with the intent of going to bed at a certain time. But because I was tired, I went to sleep, amen, and wake up like 2 o'clock in the morning, amen. Ain't, ain't nothing like good sleep. And, and you, if you ever notice that when you really sleep well, amen, that sometimes you will have a dream. Here, 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 now we must understand, amen, that God wants to purify us, amen, and in our lives. And then align us more closely with the nature, nature of God. What is happening, brothers and sisters, even in our culture, amen, this nation has fallen away from God. And the Bible says that a nation that forgets God is destined for destruction. Everywhere you look, there is a divide, amen. Now, it always seemed like the big fish eat up the little fish, amen. The rich get richer and the poor get poor, amen. And here we are, amen, uh, uh, with mediocrity, amen, just trying to survive. But I come to tell somebody, amen, surely the Lord is in this place. I stop by to tell somebody that if God be for you, I know you're going through some trials, some difficulties, some hard times, amen. Uh, every now and then you run into some mean folk, but if God be for you, yeah. he's more than they that be against you. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand from the text, somebody said from the text? Uh -huh, from the text that God's nature is love. We are challenged, amen, to uh, embody these attributes every day. I don't know how it is, but every now and then, uh, we just run into some cantankerous folk, amen. You ever run into somebody, they don't even know you, amen, but they mad and they aggravated. They want you to be aggravated also. But I stop by to tell you, amen, that uh, whenever you find out that the Lord is in this place, and that's just not uh, a physical place, you got to know, amen, that the Lord is on the inside of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Scripture says it this way, Christ in us. The hope of glory. So it doesn't matter where I'm at. I could be at Walmart, amen. I could be, amen, at the mechanic shop, amen. The Lord is still with me. I watch the commercial sometime uh, uh, on, 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 on TV, amen, and they uh, uh, got this commercial, amen, uh, with Ice-T and this other lady, amen, telling you, amen, that you got to get car shield. Transmission sitting on the table smoking. To my, this one came in very hot. You know, uh, and then they look through a window, amen. Here's another man, they're over there telling him about a bill, got to pay much for a car, amen. He, he should have got car shield, amen. He would have been all right, amen. And these types of commercial come, amen, just to alert us, amen, that there are going to come some things in life that we are not prepared for. I stopped by to tell somebody that you got to expect the unexpected, but amen, whenever the Lord is in the place. Oh, my God, there is hope. Here now, brothers and sisters, amen, I'm not going to be before you long, but walking in God's light, oh my God, is a lifelong journey. And it is filled with many challenges. Anybody faced any challenges lately? And if you do any wrong thing now, folk that don't know what they're talking about, they just grab bits and pieces, amen, put it on Facebook, say all kinds of stuff. Amen. Just meddling and messing. Amen. But uh, when the Lord is in the place, amen, you got to set your affection on things above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
Let, let me just give you four things, amen, to tell you how to be in the presence of the Lord, amen. I have the presence of the Lord with you in every place that you go, amen. So you, you have something to take with you because there are times, amen, where you get frustrated, where you get belittled, amen, where you're condescended to, amen, and you don't know what to do. Sometimes we just don't know what to do, amen, but I stop by to tell somebody when I don't know, I know that God knows. Yeah, we just got to be honest. You got to look up or tell a friend, talk to somebody. You can trust that. I just don't know. Here from the text, there are four things how, of how to be in the presence of the Lord. Number one, you can pray daily. You don't have to pray long. Doesn't have to be fancy, but you need to pray. Any praying folks up in here, raise your hand. Well, you stick around, get a little longer. You get some children. Some hard-headed children, you tell them, sit down. You tell them, amen, do their homework, amen. You, you get some chillums. And the Bible said, blessed is the man who have his quiver full of them. Chillums will give you a headache. You love them, but they still give you a headache. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the number one thing from this text is, amen, how to be uh, uh, in, in the presence of the Lord, I have the Lord in this place, is to pray daily. Luke 18 and 1 says that men and women all, always pray. You can cuss, but you'd be better off if you pray. Oh, I know ain't no cussers up in here. Ain't too many fussers up in here. We got holy folk. We got Christian people, people that love God, amen. But you can always pray. You don't have to open your mouth. You can utter with your heart. Amen. You can talk to the Lord. You, you're in the mechanic shop about to get a bill, you know. You can ask the Lord to give you the best for less. Let them fix your car. And you can ride out with a smile on your face. Number two, we ought to study the scripture. Most church folk don't even, well, they don't even pick up the Bible anymore now because we got social media device and they hardly turn to it, amen, because uh, uh, Facebook got us so distracted, amen. We're trying to see what other folk are saying and doing, amen, and we just don't have time to pray. One man said it this way, I woke up early one morning and I rushed into the day. Things became, be, be, things became hard. And I said, Lord, I forgot to pray. As I went through the journey, hard became the task. I said, Lord, why you won't help me? He said, Shaw, you didn't ask. And that's what happened in our lives. A lot of times, we won't ask the Lord, amen. We get unconventional opinions from folks. So, uh, number two, we ought to study the scripture, spend time reading and meditation uh, in the word of the Lord. That's why David said, the Lord is. We got to take the wasness of God of yesterday, put him into the isness of God today, and say that the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want, there ought not to be no lack in my life. Uh, the, the, the Lord is my shepherd. Study, read, and meditate. That's number two. Number three, amen, we ought to practice kindness. Uh, I don't know. Who, look who, see who you sit next to and tell, tell your neighbor, say, say, he ain't talking to you, he's talking to the person next to you, but you ought to practice kindness. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody, practice kindness. <laughs> Stop being mean to the dog, kicking the cat. Snatching the children around, amen. Cussing about a bill on the telephone, amen. Uh, 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 we ought to practice kindness. You're in a rush to go home. I know that the service is not long, but you're going to rush out in front of somebody, almost make an accident. Practice kindness. Say, so you go first. Somebody say amen. amen. You're, you're at Walmart. You know you're supposed to have this space. This person coming that way, and now they're going to beat you to the space, and you almost put up a finger. Tell somebody, practice, practice. Kindness. kindness. Because it was the Lord who said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. You, you, you can do more with kindness than you can with meanness. A lot of times folk won't smile. You ought to smile. I mean, I do. I smile because I don't look that good. It makes me look a little bit better if I smile. Put a smile on your face. Temptations had a song, so smiling faces tell lies. Don't let the handshake and the pet on the back fool you. All right, but you still look better with a smile. Uh, all of y'all doing these selfies, amen. Go on and put your little smile on it. Hey, and attach it to it. All right, somebody say amen. amen. 
But we are, as church people, we ought to practice kindness. Not just when you're in church or in this physical building because the church really is in you. You practice kindness, kindness will come back to you. And number four, we ought to foster fellowship regularly. Amen. That means when you can come to church, stop making an excuse. Come on, let's come and worship the Lord. Come on, let's praise him. That's why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Sometimes it seems hard to find God in the midst of pain. Can I get a witness up in here? Uh, most of us have suffered some difficult things and some difficult times, amen, then uh, sometimes you may have tears in your eyes, you don't know how, you're going to pay your water bill or your light bill, amen, and I, I just got to keep it real, it's just hard to talk about the law when you need some money. I, I know it's written on money, it says, in God we trust. But there are a whole lot of folk ain't trusting God. They want to trust in them green. But, but, but through life, amen, sometimes, amen, it's hard to find God uh, when your rent is due and the man is coming with an eviction notice and you're going to tell him that the Lord is my shepherd. And he gonna, the man going to tell you he might be your shepherd, but if, if he don't pay, you going. Can I get a witness up in here? And so in the midst of pain, amen, sometimes in marriages, amen, partners walk out. Tyrone go out to get a loaf of bread. He said, honey, I'm going to get a loaf of bread and I'll be back. And he still haven't showed up. Don't you sit there to that window looking because Tyrone ain't coming back. Pain, 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 pains can come in all kinds of form, pain. Pain, amen. Sometimes when you work hard, you work long, you don't get enough sleep. Sometimes you have headaches. Sometimes you can bend wrong. You can pick up something wrong. You get pains in your back, in your arms, in your leg, amen. But there's uh, nothing worse than a pain in your heart. That's why the Bible said, God, thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. I told you all how when I went into the military, amen, and thought I was doing all right for the first week. I was getting mail every day. Sometimes three and four letters, amen, in the same mail delivery. Man. I, uh, the boy said, you doing all right, Shaw? They, uh, she writing you. <laughs> Second week, mail start to dwindle down. I didn't know the Lord then, y'all. I wish I had. <laughs> and, and then by the time the fourth week come, You, 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 you're not getting any mail, post, postal delivery, amen. It just pass you by. Don't call your name or nothing. You sitting there, you looking, you watching and waiting. Uh, but, but, but this is about life, amen, and the struggles of life. But the truth is, amen, no matter what you go through, the Lord is right there. Can I get a witness up in here? I'm getting ready to close now, amen. We got to understand what a great God we serve. He's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And here and now, amen, as we began to look at Jacob, that's what his name is because the Lord has not changed it to Israel, amen, which he would later do, amen, but we serve a great God. Brothers and sisters, where we are now in a sanctuary with air conditioning is not where our mothers and fathers started. In the primitive Baptist churches, amen, they had holes in the windows, holes in the floor, amen, cardboard for fans. Wasn't no funeral fans to advertise their business, amen, but we've come a long way and still got a long ways to go. Uh, uh, but you could hear the old ladies would sing the song sometime, amen, without any music. They said, what a friend. We have in Jesus. Anybody know Jesus to be a friend? He'll, 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 he'll stick closer than in the brother. They're in the primitive Baptist church, amen, the preacher will read the lyrics, amen, and then they come along and pick it up and sing it. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry 
Now see, see, some things y'all don't want to carry to the Lord. You, you, you want to work it out by yourself, and you're not going to realize that God is all you need until God is all you have. Y'all ain't going to walk with me up in here. Almost some three years ago when my wife passed, amen, I cried till I couldn't cry. I hurt it till I couldn't hurt, amen, but I still had to come to realize, amen, that God, amen, uh, uh, he was all that I needed, amen. But I said, God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you deserted me? But the Lord allowed me to know. Uh, he has said, amen, to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. In other words, amen, Mo, get up and lead these people across Jordan. Uh, Moses is dead, but God is still alive. Can I get a witness up in here? The last time, amen, we saw Jacob, amen, not having a dream before this text come about. He was wrestling in his mother's womb with his brother Esau. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes when you wrestle in the beginning of your life, the stages, our life doesn't get that much better. When you're younger, amen, as a young child, you have young childish problems. But as you become an adult, then you begin to have some adult problems, sir. Here it is now, amen, we must understand that Jacob's life was full of deception and betrayal. And brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. The Bible says, whatsoever a man or a woman sow that shall, they also reap. He that sow it to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sow it to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Ah, uh, this text now allows us to understand that uh, Jacob was quite a fella. I just pray, amen, there are, are no Jacobs left in the church, amen, because the text allows us to know, amen, that Jacob and his mother, Rebekah, tricked his father, Isaac, amen, in giving the blessing of the firstborn unto him. Y'all know you got children that'll do that, amen. I tell you, my daddy didn't give me no money. Mama, can you give me five? Because you, you better wake up and smell the coffee and know where they're coming from, amen. Because sometime, amen, they're just doing it to get ahead and to get gain. It is here now, amen, that Jacob's mother feared for his life, so she told him to go away. Then his father sent him away to find a wife, amen, sent him to his cousin Laban, uh, a farm, amen. Isn't this something how... Folk don't understand that how they treat you, that one day is coming back to them again. The Bible said, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man or a woman soweth, that shall uh, they also reap. I gave you one of the uh, items found in this text. Amen. I told you, practice kindness. You be kind to somebody and somewhere along the line when you need a hug, when you need somebody to encourage you, God will send somebody to encourage you. Uh, but, he, uh, but when we look at Jacob, he was spoiled and protected by his mother his whole life. Can I get a witness up in here, Till? Let's go to Greenwood. Amen. Uh, here now from this text, uh, the Bible allows us to know, amen, that he feared for his life. He became a fugitive and a vagabond. The Bible says, amen, he told Laban, amen, now I want to marry one of your daughters. Scripture tells us that a man, Jacob, uh, was in love with Rachel. But Rachel wasn't the oldest daughter. Uh, so Laban tricked him for seven years. Somebody say seven. Seven is God's perfect number. Here now from the text, amen. And so uh, uh, Laban told him, said, this is not right according to the law. You cannot marry the youngest daughter. You have to marry the oldest. But Jacob said, but if you let me marry Rachel, I'll work another seven years. Here it is now, Jacob, in this text. Somebody say, in the text. Uh, he find himself alone. Huh? And sometimes when you're by yourself, uh, your conscience stops to talk to you. Can I get a witness up in here? Uh, oh, my God, up in here. Uh, he's haunted by his past and unsure of his future. Uh, can I get a witness up in here? Uh, oh, my God, my God, my God. Uh, Jacob began to pray and call on the name of the Lord, uh, he began to realize that his dishonesty has separated him from his family. Uh, oh, my God, you got to understand that there are some dysfunctional families, amen, and sometimes the road is long and the future is uncertain. Uh, but is anybody relating to Jacob this morning? Uh, oh, my God, here, uh, I stopped by to tell you, uh, when the journey gets hard, amen, God will meet you where you come to rest. Uh, sometimes you get 
get tired and sick and tired of being tired. Uh, Sometimes you just sit down, amen. You want the world to stop so you can get off. Uh, oh, my God, up in here. Uh, but we have to understand that there's a major doctrine that our culture and our society know nothing about, uh, and that is resting. Uh, for the Bible says, as I get ready to close here, uh, that there is a rest for the people of the Lord. Uh, my God, my God, uh, if you don't get chance to rest here on earth, uh, I stop by to tell you how uh, when John wrote in the book of uh, uh, St. John chapter number 14, uh, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, you believed in God, uh, believe also in me. Uh, surely uh, the Lord uh, is in this place. Uh, I stop by to tell somebody uh, that if you would take the time uh, just to commune with the Lord, uh, if you would take the time to seek the face of God, uh, I heard the Bible says uh, that as the deer panted for the water, uh, by the water brook, uh, so my soul uh, panted for the Lord. Uh, there's going to come a time in life uh, where the items of this world uh, will not satisfy you. Uh, you're going to need a relationship uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and here David said, uh, as I close, uh, that the Lord uh, is my shepherd uh, and I shall not want. Uh, he, 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 he maketh me uh, to lie down uh, in green pastures. Uh, he leadeth me uh, by the still waters uh, so I can have peace of mind. Uh, well, I heard the Bible says, uh, and I'm getting ready to take my seat. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, let this mind uh, be in you uh, that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, oh, my God, here uh, we're in a state, amen, where mental illness uh, is at an all-time high. Uh, Christian folk uh, are contemplating uh, committing suicide. Uh, but I stopped by to tell somebody uh, that when the Spirit of the Lord uh, dwells on the inside, uh, you got to know uh, that we serve a God uh, that sits high uh, and looks low. Uh, he behold uh, the good and the evil. Uh, my God, my God, uh, you come too far uh, to quit now. Uh, you've come too far uh, to give up. Uh, you've got to trust God. Uh, I heard the Bible say, uh, trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart. Uh, lean not uh, to your own understanding. Uh, in all your ways, uh, acknowledge him. Uh, one day uh, and one step uh, at a time, uh, you got to depend on God. Uh, and somehow, uh, somebody say somehow, uh, in here, uh, somehow, uh, somehow, uh, I don't know when uh, and I don't know where, uh, but somehow uh, the Lord will, uh, the Lord will, uh, come hell or high water uh, or no water at all, uh, somehow uh, I know the Lord will, uh, he'll make a way, uh, you got to trust him, uh, trust the Lord, uh, stand on your feet. Surely, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place, and the Spirit of the Lord is in you. We have to trust God. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I'd rather trust the true and the living God. Let not the strong man trust in his strength, or the rich man in his riches, or the wise man in his wisdom. But let him that boasts of trust, trust that he know that the Lord is with him. I read it in the text, said that the Lord was with Jacob. And if God be for you, he's more than they that be against you. Doors of the church are open. You are here today. This is the call to discipleship. The whole preaching of this text is that we need Jesus. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. The Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You don't have to go through no theatrics. You don't have to uh, flip over no benches. Amen. But we need the Lord. It doesn't matter if you don't put your name on the church roll. You give your hand to the preacher, but you need to give your heart to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are living in perilous times. Trouble is everywhere. Amen. And folk are giving up, giving out. People don't know who to turn to. But I didn't start in this yesterday. God is a promise keeper. Sometimes you ride and you see the sign that talks about promise keepers. God is a promise keeper. Songwriter says, if I live right, 
Heaven belongs to me. And God will honor his word if we would honor God. Do you know most people don't know what the word honor means? If we understood the value of honor, we would be most trustworthy. You won't know the value of loyalty. I'm telling you as a pastor, until you have felt the pain of betrayal for somebody that's close to you, do you wrong, walk out of your life, mishandle you, have other people misinformed, you'll get to the place where, is there anybody that I can depend on? Is there anybody I can look to? And the psalmist says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. Uh, you, you think your help coming from, you know, uh, you wait till you get really down and out. My help come from the Lord. All right, what are we praying for, baby? Let me see what y'all, what we're supposed to pray. Talk to me. Okay, all right, that's right. That works. Come on, baby, talk to me. All right, okay. That's all good. All right. Let's, let's remember all of these. We've been praying for Mother Rose. Amen. Talked to her earlier in the week. Amen. And we say it during communion. Amen. Death is happening all around us. Amen. And surely as you're born, you're going to die. Doesn't matter how, you know, who you are, what you look like, you know, where you live, what kind of car you drive. It's inevitable. It's going to come. Life and death are mutually inclusive of each other. All right, we're going to pray for these young people because some old folk ought to be down here too. Come on, y'all scared to get prayer. Somebody going to talk about you. They talking about you anyway. So pad your life with a little prayer so you don't get bent out of shape. Don't let, don't, don't let folks stop you. Let's believe the Lord. Amen. Malcolm, we're going to believe the Lord today, right, buddy? Huh? We're going to believe the Lord today, right? Okay, all right. All right, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you now. For these that come, O oh God, to receive prayer, Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your love. And God, we thank you for your grace, O oh God, your provision, O oh God, how you make ways to meet needs. We pray for traveling mercy, O oh God, and all that you do, O oh God, and these that come, Lord, that need a touch from the Lord. God, we thank you for what you've done, what you're in the process of doing. Mold these lives of our young people, O oh God, so they don't get de derailed or sidetracked, O oh God. Keep them, O oh God. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. Lord, I ask that you will bless this aggregation of people that are under the sound of my voice. I pray that they get the word, that we need the Lord to be in this place, that we need the Lord to be with us, that our endeavor ought to be to separate ourselves from sin, oh God, and to live for you, Lord, that our lives will be blessed so that when trouble comes, the foundation won't be shaken. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. Bless these little ones, the little bellows, amen, that come, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory, Lord. Remember. Uh, Reuben and Malcolm, amen, oh God, the whole family, Lord. God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Thank you for what you've done, what you're going to do, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Let every heart say amen. Amen. All, all right, let's get ready to be dismissed, amen, and eventually I'm going to get back to the front door and start greeting people, amen, but husband and wives all over this building, join hands, amen. I used to do that a lot, amen, uh, uh, before the pandemic, amen, and uh, folk are now scared, they're scared for you to, for you to touch them, but they... You know, uh, we want to keep everybody safe. We want to do it right. We want to love everybody and let you know that God loves you. All right, let's look away unto the Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless at the presence of his coming with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be the in your majesty, power, and might, now henceforth and forevermore. Father God, I pray now that you let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, for it is in Jesus' name. And let everyone say amen. 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 Go in peace and have a good week. Remember, the Lord is with you.